Hey everybody, welcome to the Tonal Trend Spotter Stats Vlog. Today we got a real short and sweet one for you. So short and sweet, in fact, that for this one we won't even have to go inside my computer. So that's nice. It's called Core Totals Musicians Use Most. And what that means is that we'll be taking a look at how many different chord triads per song musicians use when writing popular music. Alright, first, let me talk about how I sampled the data for this study. If you already heard the spiel in one of like the other stats vlogs, you can skip ahead, that's cool. Um, okay, first, what did I sample? The short answer is pop songs. Most of the songs from the Rolling Stone magazine's greatest 500 songs of all time list. And then also some more modern pop tunes, uh, mostly ones that my students have asked me to teach them over the years, just kind of been thrown in. So yeah, pop songs, not classical, and not a lot of jazz. Mostly top 40 type hits and other songs that critics have felt to be important to the popular music lexicon. All in all, the total number of song chord totals for this graph up here makes up a pool of around 550 songs sampled, give or take. And remember, just like the other chord stats vlogs, I'm only counting triads here. Like I'm talking one, three, five triads. That means that if you have like a C major chord in a song and also a C major add nine chord or something like that, that's still just one chord type counted. Um, the other main disclaimer here is that similar to the BPM stats vlog, when I counted separate tempos as separate songs, here I'm counting separate keys or modulations within songs as separate songs too. And I'm doing it this way because I feel like counting chords from modulations would just kind of muck up the data in a dishonest way. Like for example, take the song Mac the Knife. That song modulates five times. <laughs> meaning it plays the same four chord types in six different keys before it's done. So what are you going to call that? A four chord song or a six times four, 24 chord song? I think calling it a four chord song is probably the more honest thing to do. Plus, 24 fields on the horizontal axis would totally mess up my graph here, you know? Oh, and by the way, um, I use a projector to trace this, you know, so like I don't have like a robot graph drawing cyborg in the other room doing my work for me or something, at, at least as far as I know. Alright, well, let's get started. Um, first off, I couldn't find any songs with no chords in them at all. I tried, but I guess there just haven't been many substantial pop music hits by like high school drum lines or solo oboists or anything like that. So yeah, no chord songs do exist, just none of them made it into the study. Uh, but yeah, I mean, maybe you could take that as like a challenge, you know, see if you can get a song in the top 40 with no harmony at all, you know? You ready? All right, three, two, one, go, do it. I'm just kidding, it's probably not gonna happen. Unless you're like ridiculously good looking like me, or unless you're like, that, unless you're like that girl with the cups, you know, she's like, bop, bop, ba -do -do, bop, 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 you're gonna miss me when I'm gone, I'm gonna never sing my song. Um, you know, you know that one, right? All right, moving on. One chord songs made up around 3.8% of songs sampled, and two chord songs about 3.4%. And it's hard to notice here, but the one chord songs beat out the two chord songs by just a little bit. Kind of interesting, um, don't you think? But yeah, I should tell you that that's mostly probably due to the Rolling Stone list paying its proper tribute to all the old blues legends who made rock and roll even possible. Um, I mean, like, you know, back then, sometimes just one chord and a blues scale was all they really needed. Okay, your basic three chord song is, came in about 20% of songs, and four chord songs topped the list, uh, almost getting up to 21% usage of all songs. And then we begin to drop off. Five chord songs are at 16%, and six chord songs, 13 and seven chord songs, 10 and a half percent. And now we're going to see a sharper dip here after the seven chord song. Um, and that's most likely due to the fact that you really only have six or seven diatonic chords to work with in any given key. After that, you have to start spicing it up with the non-diatonic chords. And that can be tricky. Um, I mean, past this point, you really got to know what you're doing, either because you know your theory or because you've got a good ear and you're just really talented and creative, like Brian Wilson or something. Um, so yeah, eight chord songs are 4.4%. Nine chord songs at 2.6% and 10 chord songs 0.9%. Then for some reason we have like this slight little uptick to 1.2% for 11 chord songs. And then we drop out completely with 12 chord songs at 0.3% and 13 um, chord songs at 0.5% of songs in the top hits. And that's that. But to give you an idea of how a song can even have 13 chord triad types in it, let me single out one of the songs that arguably has 13 chord types. Uh, Paul Simon's Bridge Over Troubled Water. 
So yeah, Paul Simon's definitely on the list of top harmony users of all time. But it was his piano player friend, LA Wrecking Crew session musician, Larry Netchel, spending four whole days working on his accompaniment for this, um, that most likely pushed us into the music theory stratosphere here. Well, that combined with Simon's original concept and the fact that even Garfunkel added in some chords that he liked in between the verses is, I think, how we got to this chunky 13 chord triad stew. All right, broken down, here's what we got. Um, and if you'd like to see these chords written out, scroll down the transcription on the TotalTrends.com watch page for this video. If you're not already there, like if you're in YouTube, just click the link or whatever. All right, we got five diatonic triads with the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do notes. Uh, the major one, minor three, major four, major five, and minor six. But I should mention that the minor three chord could also be called a one major seven chord here if you wanted. I called it a minor three just because I felt like it sounded different enough from all the regular one chords that we're hearing uh, to warrant its own name. Anyways, next we got two of the more common borrowed triads from the minor, the flat seven major and the minor four. And finally, a whopping six secondary triads, the major two, the flat three diminished, the three diminished, the three major, it's a lot of threes, and then the flat five diminished, and the major six. And you could even argue that there are more if you wanted. Um, that is, you could count some more of the secondary dominant sevens as secondary diminished chords and vice versa. But yeah, that's enough of that gibberish. If you'd like to learn more about diatonics, secondaries, borrowed, and other triad types I was just blah blah on about, um, you should watch the Tone Trends Chord Aesthetics intro or the chords musicians use most vlog, also in the stats section. Um, or just Google the terms and, you know, you'll learn more about them. So yeah, that's it for this vlog. Hope you enjoyed our comprehensive study of the chord totals musicians use most. And we'll see you next time here at TonalTrans.com Music Vlogs. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, robot, graph drawing, cyborg, like, isn't it all just like a thousand chord song? Or even, if you really think about it, isn't the song of life like an infinity chord song? No man, incorrect. Life is like a zero chord song, because in silence, all chords exist. Just as in white light, all colors exist. And in darkness, all possibilities in the universe exist as well. Does that compute, dude? Whoa, I think so.